Hey folks, AJ the CEO here, and in this video, we're gonna be walking through the basic steps that you need to set up Chrome Remote Desktop so that you can manage those computers from home. Let's go. So, this is gonna be another one shot where we are looking at comments or questions that people have sent me on YouTube. And hey, I wanna get a chance to answer some of those. Ones that I know a couple of people have been asking about and I don't think it would take a lot of time to actually produce. And plus, I needed to do this anyway. Um, and I might as well just document the whole process. So, what is Chrome Remote Desktop? It is a remote desktop application provided by Google that <laughs> goes through your Chrome browser. Um, most people don't know or might not remember, I have a background in IT, I've always done help desk, tech support, all this other stuff, and I've done a few vlogs where I've had to drive to my mom's house to work on stuff. And every computer that I have access to, friends and family, or especially clients, that while I'm maintaining and doing tech support for them, I always install Chrome Remote Desktop so that I don't have to physically drive there. I can always log in and do that. So I wanna walk you through this whole process. I have my new laptop over here, so I need to do this anyway. And it's like, hey, why not just record it and show you how to do it? Cause I, I forgot who the person is. Lorraine Mattis, sorry if I pronounced your name wrong, put the comment up here, wants to know, can I do a video showing us how to set up multiple devices on Chrome Remote Desktop? Sure. Um, again, I only have one device, but it's literally the exact same process that you need to do. So let me grab my laptop, bring it over here, hook it up to the ATEM so y'all can see what I'm doing. All righty, we are on my Lenovo laptop that was recommended by the Chuck Taylor um, during the sale. Normally, I'm not a big laptop person, but with all the driving and stuff like that, I needed something to take around with me. All right, so what's the first process of doing this? I do this mainly is linked between your Google account. So for all of my clients and stuff like that, I have to log in and put my Google account on the system. Um, so that's what we're gonna do. <laughs> so let's open up Chrome here. And the good thing is I'm already logged into this. So like if I go, let me actually go to the churches and I'll show you exactly the process that you need to do for this. So as you can see, here's a couple of other clients that of computers that I've done and I have their systems in here so I can re remote in. All right, like for example, here's my mom's is <laughs> on here. So let me go to the uh, church's live streaming account. I think that live streaming system, that would be the first thing. And actually, let me do this because this was one question somebody asked. It was like, how do you stay on um, remote? Chrome remote desktop without being kicked off every five minutes. I've never been kicked off. Um, the only time I've ever been kicked off is when I've lost a connection. Um, but also you put a key on here, which we're gonna walk through. I actually like to check this off because, hey, I know what my stuff is. I don't wanna put the key in all the time. Um, so I checked that little box off. All right, so now that I'm logging into the streaming system at church. Let me walk you through what I did because I don't want my main account to exist always there at the church, but you need to link your account in some way. So here's our church's media ministry Google account. And all I really did is I linked my account here in Chrome and I switched back to the main one. That's, that's all you really have to do. Um, if you have any issues with that, you can still have it set up to where people need to put in a password so somebody just can't get to your stuff and get all through your stuff. Um, but that can be your concern. Or what I've done is also do the same thing, but log into the account um, in the, under the admin account, because any computers I set up in churches, I don't give them the admin system especially the ones I'm maintaining, I put my stuff on admin and then make a lower account for everybody else. That can also work too. All right, so anyway, enough of all that blabbing. Let's go back and let's set this whole thing up. 
All right, so the very first thing is I'm gonna close my browser and then we're gonna go to remotedesktop.google.com. And like I said, you need to be linked into your account first to do that. If you don't, go here, do a new ad, make a new account, then link your Google account to it so that you're actually tied into your account. All right, so it actually was gonna pop this up here for me already. And let me crank up the picture here. Would you like to install Chrome Remote Desktop? Yes, I would. Let's go ahead and install that. Click install. And I don't know, sometimes it always acts funny like this sometimes. It makes another window open, which wasn't really needed. So let's go through it again. So that way, if you have the same issue, hey, guess what? It's right there. I, same thing happened to me. All right. So if that install that pops up doesn't work, you can always scroll down to the bottom, set up remote access, go ahead and download the little application here. And every time I move my picture in picture, something else shows up here. All right. So we're going to go ahead, accept and install. Yes, you want to allow this to open. It's going to go ahead and do the install here. All right, we're going to give it a name, and I will say, uh, call it AJ, the CEO, laptop. All right, then next, create a pin. And no, I don't want to help improve. And we do start. Now it's going to install a service that's going to keep this running. That's how you can log into it with everything off. Um, excuse me, while the computer is on, um, once it gets internet access and that service is running, that's how you can remote into it. Alrighty. Now that's it. So now let me switch back over to my main system. So now this is my desktop here. My video editing system. And as you can see, we have our new laptop system on here now. And as you can see, I'm not on it right now. I'm gonna go ahead and move this over here somewhere so I can keep charging. Now I move my keyboard back in front of me. And now we can just go ahead and click on here and put it in our new code that we set. I'm gonna remember this. And boom, there we go. Now, again, if you have any issues where this is not allowing you to log in, the only thing I can think of is if your internet connection is not stable or um, you, you're getting something to where maybe one of these services or like, I mean, especially a laptop, I have mine set that I'll, even if it's running under battery power to not automatically turn off after 10, 15 minutes and stuff like that. You might want to check something like that, but I've never had an issue where it just shuts off in five minutes. But anyway, that's it. This is one of the, especially from a media ministry standpoint, I love this because if you happen to be on vacation, you're kind of the lead and people have a problem, I can log into any one of these systems to troubleshoot, help them, the team who's there on site, or it's been times to where like, hey, nobody's there when I was working a regular job and I couldn't get off and they had something, I could remote in and as long as it wasn't really taxing, I could remote in and control everything in the media booth through the computers even though I wasn't physically there. But that's really it, really straightforward. Um, let me know if you have any questions about Chrome Remote Desktop. And like I said, I use this for IT, I use this for um, computers that I'm covering tech support for people at a distance, family um, that are far away that I need to work on their computers, and especially for my media ministry. So anyway, that's about it, folks. If you have any other questions, like I said, leave it in the comments. Make sure if you like this type of content, I appreciate a like, consider subscribing, and hit that bell. That way you get notified when we come out with other videos to help modernize your media ministry, or if we're talking about other tech, doing one shots, or we might just be answering your comments and questions that you send or email me. I um, want to thank the patrons and the YouTube members for making this video possible. Their names are going quickly, fast, in a hurry 
right over here. Um, and you too can become a patron for as little as $1 a month, or you can become a YouTube member for as little as $4.99 a month, no matter which option that you pick you are helping us train media ministries all over the world thanks for watching folks this is aj we will see you on the next video later